Hello again. Uh, in this brief presentation, we're going to talk about herbs as a therapeutic source of silica. And I've discussed the merits of why we might want to do that in part one. And now in part two, we're going to talk about those two herbs that can deliver a reasonably good therapeutic dose of silica. And they are nettles and horsetail. No surprises because I flagged them in part one. So the interesting thing is that the research on these dates back to a long, long time ago, 1976, Planta Medica. And because of my uh, naturopathic background before I started herbal studies, I was quite interested in in uh, silicon and silica. And, and so I was fascinated when I found these studies that were published in the journal Planta Medica in 1976, so actually uh, Polish uh, investigations. And the first one I want to talk about is uh, studies on the optim optimum conditions of extraction of silica from plants with water, part five, which is Urtica dioica, nettle leaf. Uh, what the authors first did was that they followed the amount of silica in various plant parts during the growth of the nettle plant over a year, obviously in Poland. Um, so you're flipping around, you see, in June, July, August is the summer. Um, and you see that uh, the stem, forget it, the root has some but the main amount is found in the leaves. And especially, as I mentioned, it's associated with the stinging hairs. And you can see that it basically it doubles over the development period. So you want to, to get the best amount of silica, you want to be using the leaves from the mature plant. And then they extracted the nettle leaf with water. It was a decoction type of extraction in that it was simmered. Uh, they used 90 degrees centigrade, so that's a typical decoction temperature. And you can see they used uh, uh, different ratios and they used dried and fresh leaves. And to cut a, a long story short, there wasn't any much difference in extractability between dry and fresh leaves. So let's just look at the top part of the table of the dried leaves. So firstly, look at the extraction time, one hour, half an hour, half an hour. And look at the amount of water that was used, the extraction ratio, one in a hundred, five in a thousand, four in a thousand. Now, we don't know if you need quite that much water, but the, the lesson here is um, if you want to extract silica out of nettle leaves, you have to decoct for longer than your standard 10 or 15 minutes probably at least half an hour, maybe longer. And you need plenty of water in there, much more than your normal decoction ratio. So uh, ideally, uh, or practically, one in a hundred. And you get, you get uh, a quite a good uh, extraction. So you see of, of that amount of about uh, one per percent, and 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 um, the interesting thing is that uh, if you have a smaller particle size, you'll also get a, a better extraction as well. So here, here's the summary of what the author said. Um, the silicon level in the dried leaves was around about one percent, um, and the Level in uh, fresh leaves was also uh, similar, um, around about 1%, uh, and obviously more as it was collected later. And the extracted amounts were generally around about half, 46%, um, regardless of whether you're using fresh or dried leaves, and the rest was water-insoluble. So the lessons are have, have a good particle size, have plenty of water, 
and go for at least 30 minutes, ideally an hour, and you will extract significant amounts of silica from the nettle. And it's easy to work out the quantities because you're extracting about half. So it's about 1%. So you've got, you know, typically, let's say you might be putting uh, 10 grams of nettle leaf in, say, a litre of water. And that 10 grams being at uh, 1% contains 100 milligrams of silica and you extract half of that that's a dose of 50 milligrams that's a seriously good dose there was a really interesting uh clinical trial that was done in 2021 and reviewed in the american botanical council herb clip service in 2022 and it looked at supplementation of three different herbs for people suffering still from Gulf War syndrome or Gulf War illness. And they looked at the reishi mushroom, Ganoderma, the stinging nettle, Urtica dioica, and Epimedium, the Chinese herb Epimedium. And the people enrolled in the study, um, most of them took at least one of the herbs, but some took two and no one took all three. And what they found was the stinging nettle, especially at highly daily doses, appeared to help reduce the symptoms of Gulf War syndrome. The epimedium did not help at all. And surprisingly, the reishi looked like it might actually exaggerate the symptoms in some Gulf War illness sufferers. And the authors concluded the stinging nettle should be prioritised for further testing as a potential treatment for Gulf War illness. Now, the question we can ask is, is this due to the silica? Quite interesting. Let's move on now and look again at another paper, uh, the first paper in this series of uh, uh, studies from Poland and that looked at extraction of silica from Equisetomar vents, which is horsetail. And again, it was published in Planta Medica. And this is the kind of extraction curves they have at the various temperatures. So you see down here is, is uh, you know, cold water or room temperature water, forget it, and, and even water at, at uh, uh, 50 degrees C doesn't perform very well. It needs to be water at 90 degrees C. And you see they added uh, glucose and, and, and uh, other forms of sugars to see if that would assist the extraction, and it didn't really. Um, but what they noticed was, now this is ours, what they noticed was, you know, even after one hour, you're not getting most of the silica out of the horsetail. Uh, you, you need to go up to look at this. 20 hours, well, at least 10 hours, because there's this jump up here after one hour. And I presume that jump up is the, the water is finally beginning to penetrate the very tough structures that the horsetail plant has and then uh, is getting the silica out. But uh, you need to hit it for five hours if you want to get uh, most of the available or soluble uh, silica out of the horse tail. And for that reason, um, when people have been saying to me, uh, what herbs can I use for silica? I, I generally recommend the nettle leaf because even though you do ha still have to decoct that for an hour, it's only an hour compared to five hours. And the conclusions they made from this study is that obviously, as you saw from that graph, that's highly dependent on temperature. You need to decoct and there is this surprising abrupt increase after one hour that was quite consistent. And it doesn't matter if the herbs dry or fresh. Um, uh, those graphs don't convince me that the sugars helped, but they, the authors claim that adding sugars to the extraction mi mixture does seem to reduce the time for extraction. So I'll leave that to you to uh, try out. You can certainly add a bit of, bit of sugar to it. Um, 
and almost the whole quantity of the extracted silica occurs in a molybdate reactive form, which means it's bioavailable. And once you make that decoction, the silica is amazingly stable in it. And this is what they recommend um, uh, if you're preparing horsetail. Two grams of dried herb in 20 mil, uh, sorry, uh, 200 mil of water and keep the mixture almost boiling for three hours and a small quantity of sugar can be added and the resultant mixture ends up containing 55 and a half milligrams of silica or 26 milligrams of elemental silicon. Again, a seriously good therapeutic doses. So if you've got three hours to spare, you can certainly use horsetail, but uh, the nettle leaf is a, a better option in terms of that one hour. So the question remains is just how bioavailable uh, is this silica, uh, absor this soluble silica from the plant species? And that study has been done for horsetail. Silicon from common horsetail tea is well resorbed or absorbed in healthy adults. So this, this was the um, study, and what they did was they gave quite a lot, a litre of horsetail tea containing approximately 200 milligrams of silicon, so quite a high dose. Uh, but the next one with T2 was a massive, massive dose of 750 milligrams of silicon, not silica, silicon, and they were ingested over three consecutive days. And you can see a quite good um, levels of serum silicon concentrate levels, um, how they jumped up when they took the teas. And there's no advantage of having the higher amount, as you can see. Well, it does get a bit higher, but uh, overall, the areas under those curves are, are somewhat similar. Uh, and, and the bottom baseline, which is doing nothing, that's just the control group. Uh, so you don't necessarily need the T2 with the massive amounts. Uh, the first T is fine. And you're getting good absorbable silicon, probably as some form of silica, hydrosilicic acid, orthosilicic acid, I should say, or something like that, uh, in your bloodstream. So thank you. And that's how we achieve therapeutic doses of silica using medicinal plants.